So we described a position with complex numbers. Now let's try to describe a circular motion. Of course, the normal way is with geometry. We have a, a position vector r, and you'd probably say cosine of t for time i hat plus sine of t for time j hat. And in physics, we would always put an omega here because we know there has to be a frequency because this has to be unitless, so you have to have omega times c. Right now we're just doing math, so let's just leave it out just to make it pretty. Or you can just pretend omega is equal to 1 if you want. But anyway, this is the geometry. Circular motion, sinusoidal motion on each axis, pi over 2 out of phase. But now let's describe it in the complex plane. So that number z we talked about before had a real and an imaginary part that makes it a complex number. And that plane with a real and imaginary axis are called the complex plane. So now we're going to describe circular motion in that complex plane. Well, it's very similar. On the real axis, let's put cosine t. The object can oscillate as a cosine on the real axis and as a sine on the imaginary axis. And according to our algebraic method, that means you just multiply it by j. So j sine t. So that's it. So now, let's see if we can get some insight. So there's really no major insight here. Again, all I've done is instead of i hat and j hat, I have real and then, and then this square root of negative 1. Maybe that blew your mind. Let's see if we can blow it a little bit more. Um, let's expand these things around t equals 0. So what I mean is these are right now written as sinusoids, cosine and sine. We can expand them to make a polynomial and see what happens. So you may have been forced to memorize these expansions as a child. Who knows? You can also just get them from the Taylor series. I'm not good at memorizing anything, so I usually end up rederiving everything, which is why I'm so slow. So cosine t, if we apply our Taylor series, the zeroth uh, term was the function itself evaluated at zero. That's one, right? Um, times uh, t minus zero to the zero is one over one factorial is one. So the first term is just one. The second term would be the derivative of cosine is uh, negative sine, but evaluated at zero is zero. So it has no, uh, no second term. The third term would be another derivative. It would be back to negative cosine. You evaluate that as zero. That's a negative one. But, uh, and then over 2 factorial, 1 over 2 factorial, but then t minus 0 squared, that shows up to the squared term, so that's t squared. So you see, if you ever forget your expansions, you can get them again with, um, with uh, the, uh, uh, with uh, that thing we used. What was that called again? Taylor series, that's what it was. And then the t third term would be gone, and if you did this, you'd find t to the fourth over 4 factorial, uh, minus the fifth term is, is zero, minus the sixth term, t to the sixth over six factorial, etc. cetera. Okay. So if you ever forget them, you can always get them back. And then sine, kind of the opposite stuff happens. Um, let's expand sine of t and see what we get. So in this case, the constant term is gone, right? The sine of zero is zero. So you get t and then, yeah, minus, minus t cubed over 3 factorial plus t to the fifth over 5 factorial, dot, dot, dot. And that goes out forever. And these are real. If you've never done this, plot yourself, plot these, and just add more and more terms. And you'll see it makes more and more and more of a sinusoid. It's pretty exciting, actually, uh, to me. Um, let's see. So let's start putting together the expansion, then, for cosine of t plus j sine of t, okay? So what would it look like? Well, let's do the terms in order. The t equals 0 term, it's nothing here. It's just here. It's equal to 1, okay? And then the next term would be the t term right there. It's just t. Oh, but we have a j in front of the sign, so it's jt, okay? And then the next one would be the t squared term. So it would be here. It would be uh, minus uh, t squared over 2 factorial, so, but that minus is equal to what? If we wanted to put, we could put minus t squared 
over 2 factorial, but minus 1 is actually j squared. So we could say it's plus t squared j squared over 2 factorial, or we could do like this. We could say it's plus j t squared over 2 factorial. Right? That's the same thing. So we can stick j's in here as long as we square them and they don't, then they, then they stay real. Right? Anyway, let's go to the t cubed term. That's minus t cubed over 3 factorial, minus t cubed over 3 factorial, except a minus sign um, uh, would be j squared. And then there's a j in front of it, of course. So together, that makes j cubed. Well, we have j cubed t cubed. So this is actually the same as plus j t cubed over 3 factorial. And then, now you say we're, we're done. We're out of j's. Right, what are we going to do? We have plus t to the fourth over 4 factorial. Well, guess what? j to the fourth is 1. Right? j squared is negative 1, and j squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to negative 1 is 1. So this is actually j t to the fourth over 4 factorial. Right? So you can see there's a pattern here. Right? It's j t over 1 factorial, j t squared over 2, j t cubed over 3, j t to the fourth over 4. Well, that, if you know your expansions, is equal to e to the jt. So this is where we see something new and exciting, is that all your life, you grew up thinking that sinusoids did this, and that exponentials did this. That's because you grew up in the world of real numbers. If you've never seen this before, you didn't know this. If you start putting in imaginary numbers and letting things get complex, now exponentials can do this. So complex exponentials oscillate. Okay? They, they oscillate in the complex plane. And we can use that to help us describe simple harmonic motion. There's one other thing that you can get out of this. So if we look at this expression, cosine of t plus j sine of t equals e to the jt, uh, that's the Euler's equation, so this is figured out by Euler. But we can do something even more interesting, is we can let t equal pi. Okay. So let's see, say if we let t equal pi, what are we going to get? So we're going to get cosine of pi, <coughs> which is a uh, negative 1. Uh, we're going to get so j times sine of pi, which is 0, the sine of pi is 0, equals e to the j pi. So that looks kind of weird. Let me rearrange it just a little bit. e to the j pi, bring this over here, plus 1 equals 0. So this is fascinating. It's called Euler's identity. And it's interesting because it's five fundamental numbers of the universe all fit in one equation. Right? 0, the unit of the real numbers, the unit of the imaginary numbers, pi, related to circles, and the natural exponent. All fit in one equation. So this has amazed many people throughout the years. I'll give you some proof. Feynman said this amazing jewel, the most remarkable formula in all of mathematics. Uh, Constance Reed, who's a mathematician and wrote write a lot of popular books about mathematics, says it's the most famous equation in all mathematics. If Constance Reed says it is, then it is. Um, physics World declared it the greatest equation ever. Uh, Benjamin Pierce, I like this guy, so he says we don't understand it, we don't know what it means, but we've proved it and therefore we know it must be true. So I kind of like him. It's, let's, don't get all weepy over it. It's just, it's true. Don't worry, move on. And then here's something you may not have known. Gauss, of Gauss's Law, says if this formula is not immediately apparent to a student being told it, the student would never be a first class mathematician. Okay, so you may not have known Gauss was kind of a jerk. Okay, so, or maybe he was just having a bad day, I don't know. Um, this equation has also amazed students at Rice University. So if you go to the second floor of this building and go to the men's room, sorry to be gender specific, but you have to go to the men's room and go to the fourth stall on the right and look at the inside of the door and look in this little corner right there, in the little corner in the, in the upper left quadrant, you'll see this. Someone wrote e to the j pi plus one equals zero so Texas is full of cowboys. I think they were so amazed they had to make this philosophical statement in the bathroom. So it's a very fundamental thing. We're more interested in Euler's equation because we're about to use it to describe simple harmonic motion.